Ah, I've always wanted to do the Collinsworth slide. Uh, emergency press conference, because e even though we're on hashtag vacation uh, at the undisclosed location, we still gotta get the takes in. T-A-E-K-S. Plus, I, I love these setups where low production value can just talk off the cuff. And I need to talk about Vikings backup quarterback, Kalamon. I believe in the former Texas A&M Aggie. He can run like a deer. He's got a big time arm, uh, as well as he's got that great quiet leadership, multi-time team captain at Texas A&M. I went toe to toe with Joe Burrow back in the day in the seven overtime game. It was fantastic. But uh, it, it does seem like some of the fan base is polarized. And I feel like some of the fan, some of the Vikings fans are, are, are tainted uh, by their view of Kellamon because of how Mike Zimmer <laughs> treated Kellamon last year, right? Where uh, it was clear that Zimmer and Spielman were not seeing eye to eye uh, towards the end of their regime. And maybe, it, maybe Spielman uh, took Kellamon at six to six overall in the third round, 2021. And maybe Zimmer really wanted a defensive player. So what is the best way to get back at your GM who you're not getting along with and just poo poo uh, his uh, key draft pick at, at such a amazing Major position like quarterback. It's like, oh, well, why did you start Kellamon against Green Bay? Ah, I see him practice every day. All that nonsense, right? So it, you're saying it's like, oh, because Zimmer had a lot of other things going on with the front office. He poo pooed some young kid, didn't give him the time of day. That must mean that Kellamon is garbage. Nonsense. Get out of here. And uh, we back that up because of what Kevin O'Connell and Quasi Dolphamenza have done this offseason. Now, what they've said, I mean, they've said all the nice niceties uh, about Kellamon. Uh, you know, Quasi did, Kevin O'Connell did, but what they actually did, because they could have signed anyone in free agency, uh, any young quarterback uh, to be the future franchise. They could have drafted any quarterback at any time. They had the opportunity to do that. They did not uh, take Malik Willis. They did not take Matt Corral. They did not take Sam Howell to be uh, the future franchise quarterback. And also, frankly, if Kellamon was in this quarterback group, I think that he would have been the first quarterback taken. I think that he would have been a second round pick. Sort of is, is what it is. Uh, but, I, I, I truly believe that uh, Kellamon, if he's allowed to develop in, in, with a coaching staff, with Kevin O'Connell, with Wes Phillips, with uh, Gerard Johnson, uh, who uh, was also a quarterback at Texas A&M, they have that connection. A lot of the Texas A&M Aggie passing records that Kellamon broke were set by Gerard Johnson. So they got that connection going on, man. So I, I believe in this wonderful incubator where Kellamon doesn't have the pressure of starting right away. He can take his time. Uh, and then in a couple of years, he can fully take over uh, for Kirk, you what, Jerome, Ezekiel Cousins once his contract expires. Then guess what, baby? We got a stew going. And I, I, I don't care that they brought back Sean Man. I don't think that's an indictment on uh, Kellamon. I think that's more of a, well... He works well with Kirk Cousins in, in the quarterback room, even though, hey, why don't we just hire Sean Mannion as the third assistant quarterbacks coach? We could have done that, whatever. But I think what you will see is in training camp, yes, Sean Mannion will start out as QB2, Kellamon will be QB3, but eventually, duh, 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 duh. I, I think Kellamon will overtake. Plus, in a having a full, proper offseason with a actual great offensive coach, as opposed to Gary Kubiak's kid and the Mike Zimmer who, who just chimes in the offense, ah, run the ball. Ah, I don't like this kid, blah, 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 for myriad of reasons. But give Kellamon a full off season, a full wonderful training camp. I think that he will ascend to QB2. I think that he will show up and show out in preseason. I think, well, frankly, it's like preseason, man. Like, why, why did we love Kyle Suter? He, he was a tall quarterback with a big arm, uh, as well as he could run. Uh, plus, he, he just got it done. He was a gamer. He was a baller. He was a shot caller playing against threes and fours in preseason. Kellamon is going to have that same opportunity. And then I think that he will rise up uh, and, and uh, play against twos uh, later on in preseason. I think that he will be that guy. So I think that the Kellamon hype will resume. Uh, I think that a lot of Vikings fans who sort of unfairly uh, write the kid off just because of what Zimmer said. Uh, I think that it's a perfect situation for Kellamon because I, I, I still think that quarterbacks need a couple years of seasoning, getting used to being a professional uh, to really be at their peak. Like with Justin Fields, sort of feel bad for him. I, I liked him as a prospect, but the Bears last year throw him to the Wolves and then they got worse appreciably worse on the offensive line and at the skill positions uh, this season. I mean, they're just throwing that kid to the dogs. They're going to ruin him. They're, they're going to David Carr him. They're going to Ryan Leaf him. That's what's going to happen, man. But Kellamon, you just... I'll be the back of this year. I'll be QB2. I'll, I'll buy my time uh, next year. And then 2024, want some more? I'm the man. He's the man. He's the man. He's the man. Let me sip Kellamon. That's right, man. Uh, but that's it. Uh, that's uh, off the cuff, undisclosed location rant. Kellamon, why you should love 
I love him. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But till next time, Skull, no production value.